Welcome back, everyone. The end of part one is fast approaching. Our penultimate mission in White Clouds has us descending into the depths of the monastery, where Rhea wants to reawaken Sothis. Of course, Sothis sacrificed herself a month ago, but I guess we never told Rhea that. The boss skip on this map is trivial, but as usual, I'm going to avoid doing it, because that's no fun. Instead, I will kill everything. When we're trying to route the enemy here, we have a lot of space to cover, so fully two-thirds of the team is mounted. Marianne is one exception, but she makes sense because she's my dancer. Raphael is a war monk, and that class's six movement is enough for him. But then the odd man out is Byleth, who's just a warlock. When I was planning this, I originally used the Enlightened One class. I realized that Byleth was spellcasting almost exclusively, and that I could make this work if he had just four movement, so I thought I might as well take advantage of Black Tome Fair and get some extra reason points. I've also put a lot of thought into my equipment. The team is going to spread out, and my opportunities to heal will be limited. Quite a few of the enemies here can only be fought on player phase. Those eat up several of my nine actions each turn. And none of my regular team members except Marianne have physic. Therefore, I have quite a few healing items equipped. Byleth carries the Caduceus staff, while Raphael, Hilda, and Leone each have rings that restore HP. And Flane has a healing staff to enhance her restorative abilities. Others, such as Lysithia and Lawrence, are built to deliver one-shot kills. When they can do that, they don't take any counterattacks, and they can sweep through the map very efficiently. Ferdinand boosts Lawrence's damage. Petra can get a lot of skill points in tandem with Hilda. And Ignatz is paired with Byleth for the same reason. Remember, I've just rotated the camera, so west is to the right and east is to the left. Leone kicks things off by striding for the eastern team. The western group has Marianne, so they can get extra mobility from dancing. Lysithia warps Byleth to the southwest. With this assistance, and some additional aid from Marianne, he can cross two-thirds of the map on turn one. I got this. Raphael's going to hang out in the back here and beat up some thieves. Only the knight is aggressive. Every other red unit to the sides of the spawn area is completely passive, so some of my units have to engage them proactively. Ready when you are. Feel like I grew up. After picking off that archer, Cyril retreats beyond the range of the Dark Mage. Flane makes him equip anti-armor weaponry, then kills one of the armored knights herself. Hilda and Violet will do a similar dance on the other side. In this case, Hilda just deals chip damage to a knight. She can't fly far enough to attack the other archer without falling victim to the mage. Marianne dances for Byleth. She's completely immune to the knights, so this is safe. Well done. And now Byleth charges straight at the southwestern stairs. With Nosferatu, Bowbreaker, and White Magic of Void plus 20, he's a capable dodge tank. Marianne must avoid resonant flames at 30% listed hit. For turn 1, the Prayer Ring mitigates more damage against Raphael than the Silver Shield does. 
Once he starts attacking other enemies in melee range, the opposite is true. Raphael's only job for the rest of this mission will be to milk the Thief, the Brigand, and the Armored Knight for points. I think I've got Meanwhile, on the other side, Lawrence and Lysithia have positioned themselves so that they can immediately kill one enemy, then use their full movement to ride south. Noble. With the Galatea Pegasus Company's lure gambit, Cyril can move this beast out of the way. He equipped a short axe so that he would be able to counter the monster on enemy phase. This one is weak to axes, so if I'm careful, I can ensure that Cyril breaks an extra barrier segment with that counterattack. By remaining here, Flame makes that happen. Leone's march ring has allowed her to catch up very quickly. I could use a break. But the March Ring isn't necessary anymore. A Goddess Ring will help Leone recover from incoming attacks. For similar reasons, Marianne makes Hilda equip her own Goddess Ring. If Byleth hadn't critted that thief with Nosferatu on turn 1, Hilda could go kill him now. This position looks very dubious, given that there are two archers nearby. But Byleth is able to run interference. We must stop. Hilda one rounds the brigand on her way over to Bilo. Leone takes care of the dark mage. Marianne refreshes her, staying away from the demonic beast. Byleth first ensures that Leone can counter the mages, then restores Hilda's HP. Thank you. With Hero Mastery, Ignatz gets Defiant Strength. That'll enable some shenanigans much later on. When he uses his Steel Gauntlets, Raphael now deals 4 damage per hit against the knight on enemy phase. He loses 6 for lack of death blow, and another 6 because of the knight's armored blow ability. Not 
Before he leaves, Cyril shatters the last piece of the barrier. I would have had Lawrence finish off the first health bar, but this works too. Lysithia sets up an easy kill. Marianne equips the accuracy ring in order to boost her accuracy, thereby making her more accurate so that she can accurately hit. Some crits aren't finally good. Good to go. Using his steel gauntlets, Draining Blow will give Raphael enough HP to survive the knight's attack, and he'll kill in return. I stand ready. Pop the champagne. This is my very first use of any relic weapon other than the Sword of the Creator. Leave it to me. God forbid I use that up on enemy phase, though. While she's messing with Lawrence's inventory, Lysithia might as well borrow the experience gem. Archers are no trouble when you have four range magic. Stay focused. I want to go home. By going here, Hilda ends up at a spot that's convenient for Byleth. It's on the way to his next destination. Let's get to it.
As long as they're on horseback, Lawrence and Lysithia have a lot of trouble going upstairs. They also can't just walk up because there's a night in the way. Flynn makes Cyril re-equip his short axe, and then she removes the offender. Because she still has the experience gem, Lysithia should go first. Marianne's special dance will allow Leone to double the Demonic Beast. So nice of you. Unfortunately, I forgot to re-equip the Fetters of Dromi, so Marianne is now standing in the way. As long as she's adjacent to Byleth, Leone deals exactly lethal damage. Hilda will kill one of the priests, but first she stops to make sure Leone can do the same on enemy phase. I could have had Byleth patch Hilda up before she attacked. It doesn't really matter either way. Lacking anything to heal, the priest upstairs chooses to attack. Leone will eliminate the remaining priest, but I'll come back to her and the rest of the Western squad in a second. Up here in the southeast corner, my aim is to stun the last monster and to pull the Dark Mage. That mage also has resonant flames, so I want to avoid that by baiting with someone who can't counterattack. 
Flane starts by breaking the piece she weakened last turn. Afterward, she goes west, because she has business over there in the future. Ready when you are. Ciro can bust through any of the remaining barrier segments, other than the one in the corner, with Monster Breaker. Leave it the corner piece belongs to Lysithia, who can hit it with Seraphim. And because this monster is weak to lances, Lawrence is responsible for the last one. I stand ready. He is just shy of a kill, so I guess it's Lance of Ruin time again. I spent a long time thinking about how far I could move Leonie here. I was worried about her ability to get back near Byleth, where I would need her in the future, but I overthought this to an embarrassing degree. She has the March Ring still. If she retreats even one space after killing the priest, she'll be close enough. On top of that, Marianne is still available. So nice of you. Hilda breaks through the Fortress Knights by equipping her hammer, gambiting one of them, and then backing away to face the other one. She's safe there because Matodi is frozen. The Flame Emperor has this really annoying habit of moving east or west at random. And it's not easy to force him one way or the other by baiting him, since he has raging flames and only carries a melee weapon. I intend to have Hilda kill the boss. If he had gone east, that would require another stride from Leone or Byleth. But he didn't, so Leone can just kill the Fortress Knight, and then Byleth can heal Hilda. I could use a break. Before Hilda does the honors, she first weakens the Matodi again. Side note, it cracks me up that the Flame Emperor's henchman is named Me Toadie. That's a George Lucas ass name if I've ever heard one, right up there with Elon Sneeze Bagano. Flame can now kill that guy. <laughs> the 
The Eastern team will pass around the experience gem for a bit. Everyone has Kanto, so it's pretty easy for them. I just have to line up the kills. Oh yeah, Raphael's over here. Might as well get some axe points. Who, me? After all that, Hilda can deliver the hammer blow. You wish to interfere? Then your life is forfeit. I think he's a she, and I think she's an Edelgard. And has come. Is this some sick joke? The Flame Emperor is actually Edelgard? Finally, the big reveal. A second knowledge gem. 